Today on Legal Talk, uh, our final chat with uh, Nirvana Nortnagel for this year, we're talking about eviction applications, the acts, the purpose and the steps to be taken. Nirvana, welcome once again to Legal Talk. How are you doing? I'm well and you, Ian. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure yeah, chatting no. with you. Absolutely. And our final chat for 2023, hey? Isn't it crazy? I don't know. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> this ah, year went by so fast. It is. So fast. Insane. It's like there's a missing piece that we missed out on. It's crazy. So, Nirvana, talking about uh, eviction applications today, uh, firstly, which act applies when uh, proceeding with uh, evictions? So in order to evict an unlawful occupier or well, you can call them the leasee from a residential property, the procedure to be followed will be set out in terms of the Unlawful Occupation of Land Act 19 of 1998 and more specifically sections 4 and 5. Okay, and what's the purpose of uh, the Act? So the main purpose of the Act is to protect both occupiers and landowners by providing for the prohibition of illegal eviction on the one hand and the procedure for eviction of unlawful occupiers on the other. The Act does not take away any of the landowner's proprietary rights, but merely prescribes the procedure to be followed before an eviction order can be granted. The Act then merely delays the exercise of the landowner's proprietary rights until the court has decided whether it's just and equitable to evict the unlawful occupier after considering all relevant circumstances. And what steps are to be taken when proceeding with an uh, eviction application? Okay, so there are a few steps to be taken, but your first step will be your letter of demand and letter of cancellation. So we need to establish whether there's a lease agreement and and that the leasee has breached the lease agreement. An example of this would be, If the lease is coming to an end and then the leasee does not vacate um, the lease premises or the leasee has breached the agreement by not making payment of rentals, the lesser will then be in a position to cancel the lease agreement where the leasee does not perform in terms of the lease agreement. And this is generally seen from the breach clause that's within the lease agreement. Um, Usually the letter of demand is sent out stating that should they not perform, which means should they not remedy the breach of the lease agreement, that the agreement will be cancelled and the leasee will need to vacate the premises by a certain date. Um, And if they don't remedy the the breach, then a cancellation letter will then be sent. Um, uh, Once that time period has lapsed in terms of the breach um, letter, and then the period to vacate the lease premises will be contained in that letter of cancellation. Then you have step two, which will be drafting your eviction um, eviction papers, which generally relates to two, the action and the application. So your action will be your summons, and this um, usually contains an automatic rental interdict, and then your application will be the eviction application. So your summons will set out the following in essence, Confirmation of cancellation of the lease agreement, confirmation of rental interdicts appearing on the face of the summons, a rear rental up to date of summons, interest on a rear rental, ejectment of the defendant from the premises. However, you obviously have to follow the procedure provided for in the Act, and then costs. The application will be heard on two parts. So, part A and part B. Part A is your ex parte application, and part B will be the main. Um, application for eviction together with the section four notices for eviction and they will also contain these um, documents will contain the relevant terms of the lease agreement the lease agreement that the lease agreement was cancelled that the tenant failed to vacate the premises the reasons for the requested eviction and why is just and equitable um, the section four notice will contain details of the hearing of the proceedings on at least 14 days notice to the unlawful occupier and the local authority. Um, in practice, usually more than 14 days notice is given, and this notice has to be in two official languages. You'll then issue your summons and your application, um, and then the ex parte application will be heard first in court. So this is the first part of the application, which is your part A. Um, and then the purpose of this ex parte application is that you need to get consent of the court before you can proceed with the application for eviction. Um, 
and then authorization for issuing of the Section 4 notices. This ex parte application, as I believe it, it has to be served um, prior to um, the, the matter being heard as well. Step 5 would be issuing of the notices by the clerk of the court. That's your Section 4 notice. Um, so that notice needs to be issued immediately after you get consent from the court to proceed with the eviction application. You'll then take the Section 4 notice, the summons, and the application to the, deliver it to the Sheriff for service on the defendant, all the occupants, and the municipality. And then on the return date, uh, the court may grant further orders with regard to the postponement or finalization of the eviction. You may have received notice of opposition prior to the court hearing, in which case the matter will be argued on an opposed basis. So before a court can grant an eviction, it has to consider all the relevant circumstances to be in a position to rule that such an eviction is just and equitable. At the hearing, the unlawful occupier may attend and put forward reasons why he or she should not be evicted. The court then has the discretion to grant the unlawful occupier time by which to vacate and the date upon which the eviction is to take place if the unlawful occupier has not vacated as per the court's order. Then in respect of the court order, the court order must clearly state on which date the occupiers must vacate the premises. I further state that if they fail to vacate the premises, the sheriff will be authorized to remove them from the premises as of on a specified date. The sheriff is then empowered by virtue of this court order to evict the tenant or DC by force if necessary. So they, and you'll have to serve this um, court order. Once, um, if the occupier fails to vacate the property on the day stipulated in the court order, then you'll have to go to court to issue a warrant of ejectment. Thereafter, instruct the sheriff to remove the occupiers of the premises and utilize the service of a locksmith if necessary. And then in this regard, you'll have to um, issue the sheriff with a Rule 38 indemnity so that they can um, utilize the services of a locksmith if necessary. Um, but that is the process to be followed for an eviction application. It's quite sure. long-winded. Yeah, it's quite long. And there's a lot of and there's a lot of time frames um, in between each step. So you have to wait at the time period for the letter of demand. Obviously, mm. the time period that you put into your letter of cancellation, because obviously you give them an amount of time to vacate. Then you still have to draft your papers, and then obviously go to court. And then if you have to serve, uh, we generally ask for urgent same day service which is a tad bit more expensive than your, your ordinary service. Um, but that also speeds up the process in that regard. Nirvana, what is the time frame we're looking at for this entire process? Could it go up to a year? Well, it should generally take up to, I would say, three to five months, mm. depending, but also I think depending on the court role itself. And um, if it's supposed you have to consider the fact that there will be your, your, it's your application, then there will be an answering affidavit and there's time periods for that and then a replying affidavit if um, you wish to reply to the answering affidavit. So all of those, those time periods have to be taken into consideration uh, when proceeding mm. with a, a opposed eviction application. Sure. Yeah, it sounds like it could take uh, quite some time. Uh, I know that some people uh, are still battling to get people out of their houses because nowadays people have squatter rights, you see. Yes. (laughs) And and that's been going on for more than a year. So, yeah, this is is very interesting. Uh, But anyway, that's uh, eviction applications today on Legal Talk. And that's the final one with uh, Nirvana Nortnagel Associate Attorney uh, at Han & Han for 2023. Nirvana, thank you so much. And uh, wishing you you a wonderful festive season with your uh, friends and, uh, and family. Likewise. Thank you I hope so you much. Hope you have a blessed one. Yes, <laughs> I'll chat to you next year. You too. All right. Bye.
Are you or your business in trouble and struggling to find a solution? Call Hahn and Hahn Attorneys as we assist clients in finding solutions. We specialize in consumer and food law, commercial and construction law, forensic investigations and administrative law. Visit hahnlaw.co.za. That's H-A-H-N. We assist clients nationwide. Hahn and Hahn Attorneys. Because we care. Don't miss Legal Talk with Hahn and Hahn Attorneys Wednesday mornings at 10 on E-Radio.